Hey up everybody. Okay, then I'm moving on to my mountain bike, which I'm converting into a, an electric bike or an e-bike, whatever you want to call it. So in my past, in my previous videos, I did a, a, a parts one, two, three, four, and five on modifying this obsolete hub that I had given me from a 24 volt rear hub and I've made it now it's going to be a 36 volt front hub and if you take a look back at them five parts you'll see how I machined all the rotor up and rewired it and tested it etc etc but I'm now in a position now where I've got, I've got the, mot the rotor fitted into the wheel and re-spoked it into a 26 inch wheel uh, that's also in those previous parts and what I'm doing, um, I've got this Falcon mountain bike it's probably from 1990s I would say and what I'm doing, I'm not doing a full restoration I'm just doing a full overhaul of this bike and I've had all the all the various parts off, the bearings, the gears etc and uh, I've uh, overhauled everything new bearings, new uh, new cassette on the back for the gears etc etc I've just got to paint the handlebars, that's all I'm painting because they've gone a bit grotty also I've had the forks off the bushes, there's some nylon bushes in these forks they were badly worn so I've, re I've, repla I've renewed the bushes and made some new nylon bushes assembled it all back up, put it into the headstock and I'm now ready for for building it back up. So if you're gonna if you're gonna turn an existing bike into an e-bike or an electric bike, I'll just I'll show you on workbench what you're gonna need. I mean obviously you need a hub for a start and I got this one free of charge. I've just had to get it working. So I'll go over to workbench then and uh, We'll have a look at what you need to convert a bike into an e-bike. You're gonna take it if you're gonna take this route where you're buying everything in dribs and drabs instead of a full kit, this is what you're gonna probably need. Uh, you're gonna need a pedal assist sensor. That's the magnet and the actual sensor bit that the pick up. You're gonna need a throttle if you want to go that route. You don't have to have a throttle, you can either have both or either. It's up to you. Because I picked this throttle up at a good price, it's already got the battery indicator on and the on-off switch. If you don't want to go the throttle route, you'd have to buy a little LED controller for your handlebars that does the same thing as this, on-off, battery indicator and the level of power that you need. For your pedal assist. Also, we're going to want some cut-off brakes with a micro switch incorporated. That's for safety, and that'll cut your power off to whatever, wherever your power's going to, either your pedal assist or your throttle or both. So you're going to need a pair of them. Obviously, you're going to need a hub, and then you need a controller which will match the hub that you've got for the voltage, the, the current and whether it's censored or sensorless because some have hall sensors in and some don't well this one's a dual mode where I've got so it'll do either but just be aware of that uh, because some controllers are, are not brushless or sensorless or vice versa so you want a brushless, censored or sensorless or a dual mode one of the appropriate voltage and current for your hub. And because my uh, gears are on my twist grip on my handlebars, obviously I've got to take those off to fit the throttle. So I've had to buy extra a pair of thumb shifters for my gears. So that's extra just for me. And then obviously you want a battery to suit what your voltage, basically your amperage is the distance you want to go. 
I'll just briefly go through the wires on this controller because I know they do look complicated. Uh, it, it, they did look complicated to me when I first, you know, when I first started looking into all this um, business with kits for e-bikes. Uh, but basically, they all slightly, they all may slightly vary, not just in the amount of wires, in the colours, etc. But basically they all work roughly the same and you can work it out as long as you don't plug these uh, positive, and, positive and negatives wrong way around I suppose. So all you've got then, after all this jumble of wires, you've got your positive and negative, they're your main feeds from your battery. Then you'll get three thicker wires, which are yellow, green and blue. So there are your three phases to your motor. And if they don't work the motor correctly, if the motor's hesitant or sticking or whatever, it may be because these wires want they're not in the right sequence. I don't think there's a standard for them for them sequences of colours. <clears throat> and on this on this one then you've got two black and reds with the same connector on they're going to go to your brake cutoff switches a connector with six wires on but sometimes it's only five wires you've got your red yellow green blue black and white so the red and the black are the positive and negatives that go to the hall sensors. The green, blue and yellow <clears throat> are the signal wires. And the white one, I think that's for the LCD screen if you choose to go the LCD screen way. Or it, sometimes it's a temperature uh, sensor. But you don't really need to use that white wire, but that's basically what they are. Then you've got a red, black and white. So that's going to your pedal assist sensor. So you've got a positive, a negative and a signal wire. I'm, in my case, because my throttle matches up with this controller, There's another block of wires here, six wires, red and black, the yellow, brown, white and green. So two of those wires go to the on off switch, two go to the battery indicator and two go to the actual throttle potentiometer. That leaves these two, red, uh, red and black, and the, all that is a, is a 36 volt output for a light. And then on this one it's got the facility to be able to cut the power in half, and I think that's for the European market. So when that's connected, your controller will only go at 15 mile an hour. And if you disconnect that, it'll go up to the top speed, whatever the hub and the controller will do. You need to have correct voltage, your amperage to suit you, what size hub motor you've got, and whether it's a dual mode, sensor, censored or sensorless. And basically, that's what you need to be looking for. Right. I think that's going to be it for this part then, and on the next part I'll probably uh, just do a quick video of me uh, assembling all the bike up and putting all the relevant parts on. So thanks for watching then, catch you next time then, bye for now.